planning on visiting the beautiful island of Puerto Rico? Here we have some awesome tips to help you maximize your time during your visit in this gorgeous island. Here is everything you need to know before you go to Puerto Rico. But before we dive into this useful information that will save you time on your next travel, we ask you to subscribe to this channel. Please subscribe. Tell us your traveling experiences in this or any other country you have visited on the comments space below the video. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be alerted when new content is available. Subscribing does not cost you a thing and by doing so, it will give us the opportunity to produce more of the best educational vacation destination content you can find anywhere. So, here we go. After centuries of Spanish rule, Puerto Rico became a territory of the United States in 1898 and has been largely self-governing since the mid-20th century. Puerto Rico has a population of some 3.4 million people and a vibrant culture shaped by a mix of Spanish, United States and Afro-Caribbean influences. Puerto Rico began to produce cattle, sugar cane, coffee and tobacco, which led to the importation of slaves from Africa. As a result, Puerto Rican bloodlines and culture evolved through a mixing of the Spanish, African, and indigenous Taino and Caribbean Indian races that shared the island. Puerto Rico is an archipelago in the Caribbean Sea, consisting of the main island, four small islands, and hundreds of keys and islets. The island of Culebra and Vieques can be accessed via a short ride on a boat, or local government-operated ferry. The island territory is only 100 miles long and 35 miles wide. That's the equivalent of 8,870 square kilometers. Borinquen, that is how the Tainos used to call this beautiful island. is largely composed of mountainous and hilly terrain, with nearly one-fourth of the island covered by steep slopes. Puerto Rico's time zone is Atlantic Standard Time, GMT-4, or also known as AST. Puerto Rico does not utilize daylight saving time. The climate in this tropical paradise is tropical marine, with an average temperature of 8 degrees Fahrenheit, 26 degrees Celsius. The coldest month is January, with an average low of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 degrees Celsius, and an average high of 83 degrees Fahrenheit, 28 degrees Celsius. Puerto Rico enjoys warm sunny and humid days, most of the year. There is no winter, spring or fall, only summertime in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico's hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th, with most of the risk concentrated in August and September. Visiting Puerto Rico during the hurricane season is generally safe 
as hurricanes don't affect the island directly every year. As we mentioned in the previous topic about the weather, Puerto Rico's weather is hot and very humid year-round, so try to dress as comfortable and as light as possible. Bring shorts. Lots of shorts. With an average of 85 degrees Fahrenheit to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, it is likely you will want to wear shorts every day, plus, it will be a great time to tan those legs. Flip-flops or sneakers are best for walking around. Sunscreen is highly recommended when going to the beach or any other outdoor activity during the day. As of the date this video was published, passport or visa are not required to enter the island if you are a United States citizen. This makes Puerto Rico, the most accessible island in the Caribbean for United States citizens, in comparison to other Caribbean nations where a passport is needed. At the date this video was published, COVID regulations have relaxed considerably in the island. Domestic travelers are not required to present proof of vaccination or a negative COVID-19 test prior to arrival on the island. International travelers are not required to provide a negative COVID-19 test result upon entry. Some places require use of masks, but for the most part, COVID regulations are more relaxed at the majority of places. Because Puerto Rico is part of the United States territory, Puerto Rico uses the American dollar as the official currency. There is no need for currency conversion, if you are coming from the United States. As a Republican form of government, the government of the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico is divided into three branches, executive, Legislative and judicial, as established by the Constitution of Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico is an unincorporated territory of the United States. Meaning, Puerto Rico is not a state, but still belongs to the United States. Restrictions in the guidelines to enter Puerto Rico, are very similar to what you would experience in the United States, when entering or leaving the country. In Puerto Rico, the standard voltage is 120 volts and the frequency is 60 Hz. People coming from the United States can use their electric appliances in Puerto Rico with no problems, as the standard voltage, 120 volts, is the same as in the United States of America. A voltage converter is not needed in Puerto Rico if appliances are coming from the United States. Today, clean energy ambition is still paired with persistent power outages. Nearly five years after Hurricane Maria devastated this territory of the United States, claiming nearly 3,000 lives and prompting the longest power outage in United States history, Puerto Rico's electric grid remains far from revived. Power outages are common, but not as frequent to become a burden to be concerned, since most hotels and tourist areas have local power generators. Puerto Rico isn't a cheap destination in comparison with other Caribbean islands. But solo travelers can spend a week in San Juan for $700, and couples for $1,200. Budget travelers can save even more by cooking their meals or traveling in the low season. As the date we published this video, it is estimated that you could spend around $174 per day on your vacation in Puerto Rico, which is the average daily price based on the expenses of other visitors. Past travelers have spent, on average, $31 on meals for one day and $14 on local transportation. Puerto Rico Island hotels range from $45 to $205 per night with an average of 
while most vacation rentals will cost $160 to $480 per night for the entire home. Airbnbs is another option in Puerto Rico. With so much raw beauty and charm, you won't have to look far to find beautiful and unique Airbnbs in Puerto Rico. Just visit the Airbnb website and be amazed when you see these Puerto Rico vacation rentals and luxury villas. You can enjoy privacy and seclusion, along with a tropical island experience like no other. The culture of Puerto Rico has been greatly influenced by its history. With the blend of Taino Indians, Spanish and African cultures, comes a melting pot of people and traditions, as well as the impact of the United States political and social exchange in every aspect of life. Puerto Ricans tend to be friendly and cheerful people, who move their hands a lot when they talk and express their emotions with intensity and passion. The official language in Puerto Rico is Spanish, but you can say Puerto Rico has two official languages, Spanish and English. Puerto Ricans often greet each other in Spanish, and they may have quick conversations in the language. If they go more in-depth, they may transition to English. Puerto Ricans are overwhelmingly Christian. A majority, 56%, of Puerto Ricans living on the island identified as Catholic. In a 2014 Pew Research Center survey of religion in Latin America found out that 33% identified as Protestants, among whom roughly half, 48%, also identified as born-again Christians. There are 78 municipalities in Puerto Rico, these municipalities are considered county equivalents. Here we are going to mention, this top 5. On 5th place is, Caguas, population of, 82,243. Located at 32 kilometers south of the capital of San Juan. Caguas is known for its major industrial and commercial center. With more than 40 factories where plastic, clothing, leather goods, tobacco products, cameras, electronics, and other articles are manufactured. This is a semi-mountainous region located at the East Center area of Puerto Rico. At number 4 is Ponce, population of 132,502. Ponce, Puerto Rico's most populated city outside the San Juan metropolitan area. Ponce is often referred to as La Perla del Sur. The city serves as the governmental seat of the autonomous municipality, as well as the regional hub for various government of Puerto Rico entities, such as the Judiciary of Puerto Rico. It is also the regional center for various other government of Puerto Rico and U.S. federal government agencies. The municipality of Ponce is located 118 kilometers southwest of San Juan. It takes approximately a 1 hour and 26 minutes drive, if you take Puerto Rico 52 freeway. At number 3 is Carolina, with a population of 157,832 people. Carolina, town, northeastern Puerto Rico. Part of metropolitan San Juan, it is located about 12 miles, 19 kilometers, east of the capital, on the banks of the Louisa River just above its marshy lowlands near the coast. At number 2 is Bayamon, with a population of 185,996 people. Bayamon is one of the seven towns that make up Puerto Rico's metropolitan area. The city is known for its museums, family attractions, and sports facilities. Bayamon, town, northeastern Puerto Rico, part of the metropolitan area of San Juan, 10 miles, 16 kilometers, northeast. And crowning the number one spot is, San Juan, capital of Puerto Rico, with a population of 381,931 people. San Juan, capital and largest city of Puerto Rico, located on the northern coast of the island, on the Atlantic Ocean. 
A major port and tourist resort of the West Indies, it is the oldest city now under United States jurisdiction. Uber is available in Puerto Rico. There's also local public transportation system, that covers most of the metropolitan area. Taxis also are available in large cities for the most part. The best way to go around the island is in a rental car, and because Puerto Rico, as we mentioned before, is a U.S. territory, driving around here won't be a difficult as driven on other Caribbean countries. The main airport of Puerto Rico is in San Juan, SJU. There are other smaller airports around the island, but the Luis Munoz Marin International Airport is the one where you want to originate from, for wherever you are planning to go in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is relatively safe for visitors. Sporting a lower crime rate than many other parts in the United States and being one of the safest Caribbean islands. Much of the violent gun crime in Puerto Rico relates to drug trafficking and gang activity, which doesn't usually affect travelers. Of course, using common sense and self-preventive behavior, like avoiding dark alleyways or bad neighborhoods, especially at night will increase your chances of not running into trouble. Puerto Rican cuisine is a vibrant fusion of West African, Spanish, indigenous Taino and American influences. While you'll find many similarities to Latin American cuisine, the bold use of indigenous seasonings and ingredients, combined with fresh, local produce, makes Puerto Rican fare truly unique. The vibrancy of Puerto Rican culture comes alive in its dishes, a celebration of flavors that visitors have the opportunity to indulge in. Some of the favorites are mofongo, tostones, pastelas, arroz con gondulas, timbleque, and coquito. If you want to taste what Puerto Rico has to offer as a culinary destination, here we present to you, the best places to eat authentic, freshly made food. We mention this place as a guide for you to visit and enjoy. Know before you go channel is not endorsed in any way by the restaurants mentioned here and the order they are mentioned is not representative of their quality. Yave Del Mar Restaurant This cozy little place with outdoor sitting, is just short minutes away from Luis Munoz Marin International Airport. Yes, the same one you just arrived in Puerto Rico. It's a must visit when you arrive and has been delighting customers for more than 25 years. Here you can try the most delicious seafood empanadas, fritters, mofongo, or their worldwide renowned blue crab stew, with crab rice, made fresh daily. You can visit their website, and see their menu online at www.yavedelmarpr.com. You can also like their Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash yavedelmarpr. You can also order ahead calling by phone at 787 791 7227 La Alcaporia Kema Overflowing perpetually with guests, this hole in the wall in San Juan entices guests with its scrumptious Puerto Rican bites. Don't let its size fool you. Although it's a bit small, this joint deserves a spot on our list of the best rated restaurants in Puerto Rico. Not only does it serve authentic and divine Puerto Rico eats, but it also has friendly service and wallet-friendly rates. You can visit their Facebook page for more information at www.facebook.com forward slash La Alcaporia Kema or reach them by phone at 7875350000 La Casita Blanca Since 1980, the Little White House has been serving guests with its enjoyable Puerto Rican cuisine. Once you arrive at this restaurant, you'll be warmly welcomed with complimentary plantain soups and a basket of codfish fritters. 
After enjoying the freebies, you may try the exceptional Puerto Rican dishes, like Bistec and Cebolado. And, make sure to spend some time admiring the chic aesthetics on your visit to this restaurant. You can visit their Facebook page for more information at www.facebook.com forward slash La Casita Blanca PR. Their phone number is 787-726-5501 for more information. As you can see, this Caribbean paradise has a plethora of known worldwide culinary destinations around the island. From Italian, Mexican, Korean, Chinese, and of course, most of the well-known American fast food chains are also available. Disclaimer At the moment we publish this video, an abnormal situation with the current pandemic is causing a mayor short-staffed crisis around the world. Puerto Rico is also suffering from a lack of staff in most places, we suggest a call in advance, to know the details about that particular place you are planning to visit. Puerto Rico has plenty of things to do and visit, the most popular are the coastal activities, mountain hikes, old city discoveries. Adrenaline junkies and adventurous souls can also get their fix with one-of-a-kind experiences and vibrant nightlife adventures. Here we offer you some suggestions that you can enjoy while in Puerto Rico. Old San Juan Just minutes from the airport, Viejo San Juan has the variety of attractions along the walls of this ancient city, erected by the Spaniards back in the Conquistador era. Here resides El Moro Fortress, Castillo San Cristobal, and Calle del Cristo, amongst many other historical landmarks that populate the whole capital city, full of history and wonders. There are many tour companies available locally. Numerous travelers encourage others to walk the cobblestone streets to view the historic, colorful architecture and experience the vibrant culture. No need to leave for lunch or dinner, this section of town is bursting with street vendors and restaurants, ready to satiate your appetite. At night, the city comes alive and is filled with a bustling nightlife, known for its drinks and dancing. For optimal strolling, Past visitors recommended seeing the area early in the morning before tourists wake up, and vacationers disembark from their cruise ships, the cruise port is at the base of Old San Juan. Should your feet get tired, you can hop on the free trolley that operates throughout this part of town, however, know that it can run infrequently. Recapping The cost to visit Old San Juan is free. The most likely activity you will be experiencing is sightseeing, walking and attractions. Be prepared to spend a few hours to half a day, since San Juan has lots to offer. Since, we just mentioned San Juan, you can't pass the opportunity to visit this colossal structure, that once protected the old San Juan Bay from pirates and other invaders, in old times. Now, El Castillo San Felipe del Moro, known simply as El Moro, is Puerto Rico's go-to, tourist attraction, both for its extensive history, and its outstanding vistas of the Atlantic Ocean. You can also walk through the fortress steps, which include a maze of tunnels, barracks and prison cells. Exhibitions and a park film offer a more in-depth look at the fort's history, and park rangers are stationed around the site to answer questions, and lead interpretative programs. You'll enjoy exploring more if you wear comfortable walking shoes, as the site is quite big. Travelers tend to agree the site is worth visiting, whether you're a history buff or not. In addition, they report that it can take up to three hours to explore the entire fort on foot. Recapping El Castillo San Felipe del Moro has an entrance fee. The most likely activity you will be experiencing is sightseeing, walking and educational experience. Be prepared to spend a few hours to half a day, walking inside the walls of this magnificent fortress. The El Yunque National Forest Or El Yunque, as is simply known by locals, is the only tropical forest in the United States National Forest System. It's also a particular favorite for vacationers who like to hike, but even if nature really isn't your thing, 
Travelers urge you to make the trip about 30 miles east of San Juan. You'll enjoy exploring. Remember to wear layers that can get wet. The highest elevations can receive up to 200 inches of rainfall annually, and pack a water-resistant camera to capture some of the area's splendor. Keep your ears peeled in the evenings, when Puerto Rico's tiny coquí tree frogs begin their serenade. The forest is still undergoing recovery efforts following Hurricane Maria. Certain trails remain closed, such as La Mina, but other hikes are open and range in difficulty. Angelito Trail, an easy hike that leads you to swimming spots. El Toro Trail, a difficult trail which takes you to the highest peak in the Luquillo Mountains. And La Coca Trail, an extremely challenging and primitive hike, are all open to visitors. All camping is also unavailable at this time. Check the United States National Forest Service's Alerts and Notices website before your trip to know which trails and roads are open. Travelers agree that El Yunque is a worthwhile day trip to get out of the busy city. In addition, many travelers also note that they explored the forest on a guided tour rather than exploring by themselves. Recapping El Yunque National Forest has not access fee. The most likely activity you will be experiencing is sightseeing, walking, hiking and being amazed by the natural wonders around you. Be prepared to spend a full day, surrounded by almost untamed, natural forest. Visit El Yunque's official website for further details. This South Vegas beach might not sound like much, but it's one of travelers' favorite experiences in Puerto Rico. During the day, bioluminescent Mosquito Bay is your stereotypical Caribbean hideout, but at night, the waters emit a blue glow from the organisms, called dinoflagellates, that live there. More than 600,000 bioluminescent dinoflagellates live in each gallon of bay water, and recent travelers have been amazed by just how much visibility these tiny creatures provide. Avoid visiting the bay during the full moon, the microorganisms aren't as visible then. Also aim for a quiet approach. Recent travelers recommended going out in a kayak, to get the full effect of the glow and to prevent disturbing the dinoflagellates. Though you can visit Mosquito Bay unaccompanied, visitors suggest you spring for a guided tour of the area. Tours operate nightly, and cost approximately $60 per person, depending on the company you book. Recapping Cost of tours at Bioluminescent Mosquito Bay in Vieques may vary according by tour company. The most likely activity you will be experiencing are beach type activities. Be prepared to spend a full day since you need to reach Vieques by boat or ferry. Then find out what time the tour starts. Tour times vary by company. Although Puerto Rico is surrounded by beautiful beaches, there are many that stand out for its charm. Despite its name, in Crash Boat Beach you won't need to worry about sinking ships at this beach in Aguadilla. Snorkelers regularly trek to Crash Boat for its clear waters and multitude of fish. The beach and its pier are also beloved by sunbathers, fishermen, volleyball players, scuba divers and daredevils who love to jump into the water from the pier. After a day in the sun, stop by one of the area's many kiosks to refuel or take a short drive to one of Aguadilla's restaurants. It's no wonder this western beach is often one of Aguadilla's most popular spots for travelers of all ages. Repeat travelers said the beach is smaller after Hurricane Maria, but noted that crash boat is well worth a visit. Tourists love the beach's turquoise waters and ample activities. The near constant crowds don't seem to bother many travelers, but if you're looking for a quiet environment, this may not be the beach for you. Crash Boat is located in Aguadilla, about 4 miles southwest of the Rafael Hernandez International Airport. It is open daily, year-round. While free to enter, you may need to pay a small fee for parking. Recapping The cost to enter Crash Boat Beach is free, you might encounter a small parking fee. The most likely activity you will be experiencing are beach-type activities. Be prepared to spend a few hours to half a day. And last, 
but not least, is Toro Verde Adventure Park. An ecological adventure park with unforgettable zip lining experiences. Located in the Orocovis Mountains, at the center of the island, it is home to a modern marvel of adrenaline pumping adventure known as the Monster, a 2.5 km zip line that is one of the longest in the world. Recapping Toro Verde Adventure Park has an entrance fee, with a range of prices, depending on which zip line combos you choose. The most likely activity you will be experiencing is walking, hiking, wall climbing, zip lining. Be prepared to spend an approximation of a few hours to half a day or more, depending on your activities in the park. As you can see, Puerto Rico has something for everyone. Please visit Puerto Rico's website at www.discoverpuertorico.com to learn more about activities and other adventures available. Puerto Rico is the world's leading rum producer. 80% of the rum consumed in the United States hails from the island. There is a counted number of bioluminescent bays in the entire world. Puerto Rico is home three bioluminescent bays. Puerto Rico is a combination of history, diverse culture and heritage. Full of beautiful landscapes, warm people, fascinating attractions and intriguing cities. There is no reason not to visit. Puerto Rico has one of the richest artistic, cultural and historical heritages of all periods. Puerto Rico is a very diverse island, with a little bit of everything. As we have shown in this video, we are sure you will find Puerto Rico is a great destination that has something for everyone. That's all for this magnificent presentation. Thanks for watching. Here are some other video suggestions that you might like to see. Don't forget to subscribe and comment your experiences here with us. Again, thanks for watching. And we'll see you soon.